Oh snap, Blaze is going live. Good day, good day, good day, good day. Thank you for joining me. Just in case you join me for the very first time, I'm your host, the one they call Brian Glaze Gibb. I was once the problem. Now what I do is I seek to be part of the solution. I seek to make sure these kids don't make the same mistake that I made between the age of 14 and 24. Right now is I got caught up in so much of knucklehead stuff. You know, prison, um, violence, um, drug dealing, everything, murders, everything at an early age. And my objective is utilizing this platform as my hood ministry to get these kids to understand if you jump up the porch, understand the consequences. Understand what's going to happen when you jump off the porch. You got some people jump off the porch, and guess what happened? They wind up in jail just like that. You got some people jump off the porch, guess what happened? They wind up in the graveyard just like that. And right now, is here it is. Today, what I'm talking about these individuals, BMF, okay, right now, Big Meat, Southwest T. These guys jump off the porch. And what happened to them? You see, they talking about their life. Stars, 50 Cent. Doing their series, BMF. Okay? A lot of stuff go deep in the original surface. Keep that in mind. Here it is. How come they let BMF Southwest T out in May of 2020, but refused to let his brother Big Meech out? But three months later, the alleged killer of Jam Master J is picked up. Hmm. Sit back and think about that, folks. All right. Southwest T and Big Meech. From my understanding, both got sentenced to 30 years. So if you get sentenced to 30 years, all right, under the new law, you get sentenced with the federal government for 30 years. The earliest, the earliest they could have got out was what? And 26, 27 years. That's the earliest with good behavior. Here it is, Southwest T got out in less than 15 years. You remember I said I was doing a segment on sneaky snitch. A lot of times right now, people can make deals. Nobody know nothing about it. People do not understand. So when you sit back and think about it, here it is, your brother's still in jail. He got 30 years. And he don't get out until what, 20? You know what I'm saying? 29? And you got out in 2020. Okay? How was that? What happened? What took place? What changed? Okay, what they were utilizing is you were sick. The coronavirus, all right? COVID, that's why they let them out. Compassion. Folks, listen, man. I know plenty of people. Plenty of people apply for compassion release. They didn't get it. But right now is what would make them give this young man, okay, in his early, what, 50? Compassion release. You know why? Because once again, the United States government... They work in different ways. When you help them, they're going to help you. If you take care of them, they're going to take care of you. And right now, when I sit back and I think about it right now, honestly speaking, right now is Southwest T had to been working with the United States government. And they found a way based upon all his cooperation to get him out. And as I say, how come right now is right after you know I'm saying he got out, they indicted two guys for the Jam Master J murder. And even with that being said, what the government is trying to prove that Jam Master J was a drug dealer. That Jam Master J, the legendary Jam Master J at Run DMC was selling drugs. He was a drug dealer. And allegedly, he was getting it from who? Southwest T, the man they call Oum. Folks, listen, man. I am not the smartest person in the world, but I'm not the dumbest person in the world. You do the math. Sit back and think about it. It doesn't add up. Right now, if he got out, why didn't he let me out? You know what? Same case. Same situation. No murders involved. Let me go ahead. Let me, let, let's go a little step further. And let me give you a quick bio, quick rundown. Okay, when they talk about the BMF. The Black Mafia family was founded in 1985 in, in Southwest Detroit by brother Demetrius Big Meats, Flournoy, and Terry Southwest T. Flournoy. And by 2000, had established a cocaine distribution sales throughout the United States through their Los Angeles-based drug source and direct link to Mexican drug cartel. The Black Mafia operate from two main hubs, one in Atlanta, 
for distribution run by Demetrius, Floyd Noy, and one in Los Angeles that handled incoming shipment from Mexico run by Terry Floyd Noy. The Black Mafia family under Demetrius Floyd Noy entered the hip-hop music business as BMF Entertainment in early 2000 as a front organization to launder money from cocaine sale and to legitimize itself. BMF Ent Entertainment served as a promoter for several high-profile rappers, okay, including Blue Da Vinci, Demetri Flournoy, and the Black Mafia family became famous in hip-hop popular culture for their highly extravagant lifestyle. In 2005, the Drug Enforced Agency indicted members of the Black Mafia family untimely, securing conviction by targeting the Flournoy brother under the Continual Criminal Enterprise, CCE, and both were sentenced to 30 years imprisonment. Prosecutor alleged the Black Mafia family made over $270 million in the course of their operation. So once again, they were sentenced to 30 years. 30 years, okay? Even with good time, the earliest you can get out is about 26 years. This man got out 11 years ahead of time. Why? How? To me, that's highly impossible. I don't care what anybody say. So when you sit back and you think about it, everybody want to talk about who snitched, who didn't snitch, and all that stuff like that. It's plenty of people snitch that it's not publicized. But let me show you something. What's going to wind up happening? From my understanding, Southwest T is being subpoenaed. Right now is he's being subpoenaed by the United States government for the part of the Jam Master J murder trial. Why is that? Okay, here it is right now. What can Southwest T paint? They trying to get a picture painted that Jam Master J was a drug dealer. He was a big time drug dealer. And right now is Southwest T was his supplier. So automatically what they trying to do is say that Jam Master J got killed of a drug deal that went wrong. I don't believe that. I still stick to what I say is Jam Master J death was an accident. And what they trying to do, the government trying to spin it and saying that Ronald Tenard Washington called Jordan Jr. Killed them because a drug deal went bad back in July of 2002. Sit back and think about it. If a drug deal went bad back in July 2002, Jam Master J didn't get killed until October 30th. 2002 and with that being said trust me folks i'm from the street right now is if somebody screw you around or cut you out of a deal or whatever guess what they're not gonna wait 120 seconds they're not gonna wait 120 minutes let alone 120 days that these guys allegedly jam master j cut them out of the deal they're not gonna get paid or you know we gotta do something and you took two individuals ronald Tenard washington Carl Jordan Jr., they don't even like each other. And you put them together. One person at the time was 38, the other guy was 18. So it's like you putting an odd couple together to commit a crime. It didn't happen like that, folks. Once again, Jam Master J, guess what? His death was an accident. But once again, yeah, okay, he probably was out in the street. He probably was like, you know, getting drugs. He probably was hustling. Everybody wanna live. Because even right now, imagine being a top DJ, for a rock and roll hall and fame group, Run DMC. And then all of a sudden right now, you make bad business decision. Money's not coming in like it used to. And then all of a sudden right now, you got bills, bills, bills piling up on you. Desperate people do desperate things. And that's what was going on at that present time. Desperate people do desperate things. So he was finding ways to try to come out that hole, owing IRS allegedly over half a million dollars. But once again, like I say to me, how come back together, Southwest Team? All of a sudden, he's supposed to be what? He's supposed to be subpoena. Why? Why would they subpoena a drug lord? Why would they subpoena a kingpin? He's already free. But why would they subpoena him how many years later? Okay? What do he have to do with the Jam Master J murder? Not a damn thing. They're just trying to establish the timeline that, guess what? That Jam Master J was a drug dealer. That he was not squeaky clean as people want them to think. But when you sit back and think about it, folks, here it is, the guilty people that should be on trial. Once again, as I say, Lydia High. Lydia High is in Vegas, and she come on a Vegas radio station, what, 88.1? And she trying to give people financial advice. She trying to give people tax advice, how to fix your credit. Right now, Lydia, stop trying to fix people's credit and fix this case. 
Come forward. Tell them Jam Master J died of an accident. It was an accident that never should have happened. Tell them who you walk into the studio, okay? Who you know shot Jam Master J and ran out. The same guy that you escorted in. Don't lie on that, man. You know what? And like I say, Tony, come clean. Right now, guess what? Get immunity. Right now, don't send these two guys that didn't have nothing to do with it. Don't send them to the penal for absolutely nothing. You know what? Because that's what you're doing. I don't know what your motive. And like I told you right now, was guess what? Randy, right now, it's not too late. I understand you're the mastermind of the cover-up. It's not too late. But once again, here it is. From my understanding, Southwark T, he's having a fit. He don't want he don't want everything to come out. Why would he? Right now, he getting a check. BMF about to go into season two. Right now, everybody thinking he's a stand-up guy. And he probably is in his own right. But once again, people always want to say what they will do and what they won't do. Nobody know what they're going to do until that time comes. When right now, when they try to hit on a thousand years, this man had 30 years. And he came home in less than 15 years. So you tell me, who is Southwest T? Is he's the founder, the brother of Big Meech? You know what I'm saying? The drug lord? That's a sneaky snitch. Folks, listen, man. Kids, listen. The message to this story is do it right the first time. That you don't have to worry about your phone being tapped. You don't have to worry about federal agent kicking in your door. You don't have to worry about the stick of kids coming to get you because right now they think you're living a life of rally. Once again, if you do it right the first time, you punch a clock, you don't have to worry about none of that nonsense. You know what you can do? You punch a clock, you save, you invest, you, you should make the right decision, make sure you got good credit. Guess what? You're gonna retire, you're gonna retire legally, comfortably, man. Take it from somebody that that note. Hey, listen, folks, anybody that you know that's suffering from high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high weight, high sugar, get your Panoxol, man. Get your Panoxol. It's natural ingredient that would help you with high blood pressure. You know what I'm saying? Um, high weight, high sugar, high cholesterol. Hey, get your signed copy of the Beyond Lucky book by emailing me, Brian, B-R-I-A-N, Gibbs, G-I-B-B-S, 1201 at gmail.com. Order your signed copy today. Hey, peace. Love and prosperity. One love.